Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. short. You are short. I know. Hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. <laughs> Did it to you. Nice. Jump right in there. She's getting us started without me not knowing. I mean, you see it's on. Well, yeah, but I thought we were going to start over. We can start over if you want to. We don't have You're to. You're still going to be short. I will be. <laughs> She's sitting on it again, if you don't know. Two pillows. Two very tall pillows. I was worried I had the fingers wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad you guys are here today. Um, we're going to check out something that I can't believe we don't know. I know. We don't know enough about <laughs> Princess Anne. Enough. What do you know about her? Not much at all. <laughs> exactly. That's a shame. And we're, we we hear so much from people, Princess Anne's my favorite royal and things like that. And she's such a badass. And I'm like, I don't know what you guys know. We don't, no. we, we shamefully don't know, regrettably don't know, but hopefully today we'll know a lot more because we're going to take a look at this video. What's it called? The Untold Truth of Prince Anne, Princess Anne, the Queen's Only Daughter. So, I mean, we've seen her riding the horse being uh -huh. uh, basically the King's bodyguard. Yes, at, at coronation. Yep. And, um, and then we also saw her during the Queen's funeral, yeah. obviously. And we've seen her here and there, but we really don't know. I don't know anything about her life. About her than that. So we need to get in here and figure out what makes her such the badass that everyone refers her to. Yeah. And now again, we have not seen this video. We don't pre-watch our videos. I did send this to two people. Um, it's an American uh, narrator. They said it was a good video. It was just weird hearing an American say it. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> I'm like, okay. So we're going to check it out and finally learn about Princess Anne. A sassy princess who refused to be kidnapped? Getting it on with Camilla's first husband? What? Princess Anne puts the spice I in can't the royal sure. tea. To judge by the crown, Queen Elizabeth II was not the most available mother or the most caring. Even without a Netflix drama coloring public perception, it's long been thought that the queen was a distant mom, putting duty and the firm ahead of family. But Princess Anne has long pushed back on that mm. assumption, revealing okay. in the mm. Queen and Country documentary, I simply don't believe that there is any evidence whatsoever to suggest that she wasn't caring. It just beggars belief. Ha. If mm. the queen was physically distant, she had good reason. Yeah, she, she was, was already taking up royal duties on her father, King George VI's behalf by the time the future King Charles III and Princess Anne were born. Yeah. Anne took on even more work and travel responsibilities as monarch. It was. Let me just say something real quick. It's, it's the age old thing, man. If it was a king, no one would say anything about him being a distant father. That is it's always the true. women that get the crap and it's always mm -hmm. a bunch of junk. It's like, just shut up. Working moms have it rough. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's, a, it's tiring. It's like, come on, mm -hmm. change the narrative at this point. We're, we're over it. We're tired of hearing it. Sorry, it's had to say it. And were born. Anne took on even more work and travel responsibilities <clears throat> as monarch. It was also typical of her generation and her father's generation to entrust a good portion of child care to nursery staff and private tutors. Mm -hmm. Various biographies of Charles have used this to imply a distance between mother and children. But Anne has insisted she and her brothers understood that the Queen's heavy workload would take up her time. She added in her Queen and Country interview, I don't believe any of us for a second thought she didn't care for us in exactly the same way as any other mother there did. There you go. Mm -hmm. I just think it extraordinary that anybody could construe that that might not be true. Per the royal family's official website, Princess Royal is a title reserved. Sorry, I'm just going to go and say that I trust the source of the child who was raised by the mother Versus a tabloid mm -hmm. or press agent. Just yeah, saying. somebody looking from the outside. Exactly. Be true. Per the royal family's official website, Princess Royal is a title reserved for the reigning sovereign's eldest daughter. That okay. means Princess Anne's daughter, Zara, won't be taking the title when Anne passes. But Prince William's daughter, Charlotte, may oh. not necessarily get it either. Okay. That's because Princess Royal is an honorary title awarded by the monarch not something automatically inherited. Okay. The Princess Royal title was created by Charles I for his daughter Mary around 1642, wow. but it didn't take at the time. Even when Mary married William II of Orange and their son William III married his own Mary and ruled with her after the Glorious Revolution, they didn't bring it back. 
Princess Royal okay. was reintroduced by George II for his daughter and has stuck around ever since. Technically, however, the monarch awards the title at their discretion, so it could be withheld for whatever reason. Once granted, the title is held for life. This is why the Queen was never Princess Royal, despite being eligible for it. Her great aunt Mary, daughter of George V, was still Princess Royal when George VI was crowned and remained so until Elizabeth took the throne. Got it. No eldest daughter of a sitting sovereign has been refused the title when it was available, but it's never been awarded immediately upon the death of the last Princess Royal. Okay. When Mary died in 1965, Anne went without it for 22 years. The Queen finally named her Princess Royal in 1987. Huh. Yeah. At first glance, it's more like something out of Game of Thrones than the crown. Princess Anne dated the husband of Camilla, future wife to Prince really? Charles. The crown jumped no. at the chance to make intrigue out of the relationships, insinuating that Anne and Andrew Parker Bowles were sleeping together, and Bowles with Camilla at the same time that Camilla began seeing Charles. Oh, I see. But the truth wow. isn't all that scandalous. No. It was all very straightforward. He got what he wanted, which was to make Camilla jealous. I got what I wanted, which was a bit of fun. According to Sally Bedell Smith's Prince Charles, the passions and paradoxes of an improbable life, Anne's romance with Andrew Parker Bowles was a brief fling, destined to never go further due to Bowles' fate. To this day, royals in the line of succession who marry Catholics have to give up any claim to the throne. But what? after the romance visit, really? I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -mm. Huh. Interesting. Learning a lot here, actually. We are. Okay. And <clears throat> we did watch the first season of The Crown. Uh huh. A couple episodes of season two, but that was it. That was back when I first came out. I know. Um, we, we, I don't know if we should get into that or not. If it's so completely inaccurate, which I'm not sure if it is. Right. I've heard that, but I don't mm -hmm. know if it's true. I think Let they take some liberties and go off of history. And but that's pretty much everything. Of course. Make it more interesting. Yeah. Make it more scandalous for sure, right? I didn't know that, though, about the, the whole Catholic thing. Interesting. No, I didn't either. Anne and Bowles maintained a friendship <laughs> that has lasted to this day. Bowles even stood as godfather to Anne's daughter, Zara. Rumors persist that Anne and Bowles had an on-off affair during the 1980s when both their marriages were beginning to fail. But there's no evidence that their time in a relationship overlapped with Charles and Camilla's early romance. Fidel yeah. Smith told Elle that the latter couple didn't meet until 1972, two years after Anne and Bowles got together. Fidel oh. Smith also doubts the Crown's scenes of Anne discussing her relationships with Queen Elizabeth II and the Queen Mother ever happened. Sex isn't a subject for dinnertime conversation mm. in the royal family. <laughs> Would think not. Yeah. Princess Anne Especially loves horses. Time. She comes from a family mad for horses. According to biography, her father was an avid polo player, and according to the Telegraph, her mother bred horses, and her siblings all started riding by age three. Wow. But Anne has had the opportunity to carry it much further. She started competing and eventing when she was 11 years old, and it didn't take long to start winning. By 21, she was the European eventing champion, Holy having crap. ridden her mother's horse doublet to victory. While she took up royal duties after completing her education, Anne stayed active as a competitive horsewoman. In 1976, despite a fractured vertebra, she joined the British team for the Olympics what? in Montreal, the first British royal to participate in the Games. She That's seemed awesome. bound for the Munich Olympics four years earlier until Doublet suffered an accident and had to be put down. Aww. Montreal could have been an even greater disaster for Anne. She suffered a concussion when she fell off her horse halfway through the event. Jeez. She remounted and... Sounds like she was really active with the horses. And I had heard that, and I think that was uh, through some of the comments that we had had. Oh, really? I didn't see that. Some of the videos that we had done. Huh. Um, that she was really into horses. And of course, we knew the, the queen loved yeah. horses. and. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's really nice that she kind of shared that with her mom and Absolutely. carried that on. And that's pretty badass already. She suffered a concussion when she fell off her horse halfway through the event. She remounted and completed the course, what? though to this day, she has no memory of the back half. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. The Crown has made storylines out of several royal brushes with violence. Michael Fagan's break into Buckingham Palace, Lord what? Montbanton's assassination, about that? and his flirtation with a planned coup against Prime Minister Harold Wilson. But it skipped over the harrowing experience of Princess Anne in 1974, when a 26-year-old burglar attempted to kidnap her and hold her for ransom. According to the BBC, Ian Ball drove Anne's limo off the road with his Ford Escort one March night in London. Ball got out and started firing, injuring two policemen, Anne's driver, and a tabloid journalist who tried to intervene. 
Anne, her husband, and her lady-in-waiting were on the floor of the limo when Ball confronted them, they according the to The Age, telling Anne, I want you to come with me for a day or two because I want two million pounds. Will you come? Anne snapped back, not bloody likely, and I haven't got two million pounds. Shut up! <laughs> Anne struggled to remain polite with Ball as the standoff continued. Recounting the experience for Michael Parkinson, she said she was eventually able to escape out the other side of the car and that Ball was apprehended trying to escape. Wow. What? <laughs> why have we never heard about this? I don't know why we haven't heard this. Maybe we, I, I don't know. I mean, no, I did not hear this. I would remember that. That is awesome. Yeah, I mean. It, not, you know, not what happened. Exactly. More of her response to it. That's pretty um, <laughs> badassery. <laughs> Huh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Did not know this. Yeah, that's amazing. Starting to see why y'all love her so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay. Huh. Alrighty then. Well, that's, um, and then the crown didn't even do anything with that. That's weird. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. take the real story. Make up some fake stuff. Right. right? Okay. Huh. Escape out the other side <laughs> of the car and that ball was apprehended trying to escape. Good for her. Greatly impressed by Anne's coolness under pressure, Prime Minister Harold Wilson summed the whole incident up as, quote, a very good story in the government file. He got the door back open, but in the process of getting the door back open, the back of my dress split. Princess Anne's <laughs> reputation as the hardest working member of the royal family hasn't come about by chance. According to the royal family's official website, she started her public service at the age of 18. Jeez. In the years since, per the site, her Royal Highness has become involved with wow. over 300 charities, mm. organizations, and military regiments in the UK and overseas, and she devotes a large part of her working life to official engagements and visits. Wow. According to the Times, she carried out 387 royal engagements, and in some years, that number has passed 500. Jeez, wow. Anne's dedication to her work and her sometimes cutting manner haven't always brought her praise. Camilla Tomini of The Telegraph wrote about Anne's early reputation for haughtiness, earning her the unflattering nickname of, quote, her royal rudeness. Over That's the mean. years, however, that reputation has shifted. As Tomini wrote, she is now hailed as one of the great English eccentrics whose unparalleled royal work ethic has rightly earned her national mm -hmm. treasure status. Okay, so like so far, all of this is incredibly interesting to me. It is. And, um, you know, when I've seen her just like, you know, like you said, at the Queen's funeral, at the coronation. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about her, um, but I could just feel, you know, something really cool coming off of mm -hmm. her. And she seems just very collected and very, and she kind of does seem, I know now she is in a way the patriarch of the family, right? She mm -hmm. has that air about her. Yeah, she does. Does that make sense? Yeah, she has a lot of the qualities that uh, we saw in the Queen. Yeah. Um, yeah. With just kind of like, a little bit. Pardon my language, not taking shit from anybody, and she's going to do what she wants to do. Yeah. And, and she's going to do it well. Yeah. Yep, yep. I think and that's she, perfect. She, um, even during the times, kind of forego all of the gender roles of everything. and you Just know. be yourself as a person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well said. That's amazing. Well said. She's yeah. amazing. I'm fascinated by her. Uh -huh. I've, I have been, and that's why I wanted to do this video, because I want to know why am I fascinated by her. I don't really know why I am, but I just feel like she is mm -hmm. a cool person, like someone I'd want to go up to and be like, right. can we have a chat about <laughs> anything at all? And now I'd be, yeah, I'd have a lot of things to chat mm -hmm. with her about. This is really cool. Unparalleled royal work ethic has rightly earned her national treasure status. The sentiment that Anne is committed to her causes is felt elsewhere in the Commonwealth. According to the former Canadian Secretary to the Queen of Canada, Kevin MacLeod, her credo is, keep me busy, I'm here to work, I'm here to do good things, I'm here to meet as many as possible. Mm. That's awesome. Princess Anne seems to have issues holding to the speed limit. Now that's a cool freaking photo right that there. That is an awesome photo. I would like this entire, mm -hmm. outfit, this whole outfit, this, this entire yeah. thing. <laughs> that's just cool. And you just said about gender roles and then this picture pops up. Right, and uh, yeah. I, I was looking at some of the, the photos that they were showing us, um, even back in the 60s and stuff with the, the different hairstyles, uh, the big hairdos, updos. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. She's kind of chameleon-like. It yeah. seems like she'll, you know. She can take on any role. Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. I love her already. Especially when she's on her way to an engagement. Her most Speeding recent tickets. incident happened in 2000, according to the BBC, when she raced through Gloucester at 93 miles per hour before <laughs> a police car began pursuit. Fire up the roof. She's you, Daddy. That was brilliant. 
Anne <laughs> believed that the car was there to escort her to an engagement in Hartbury and kept going, even <laughs> speeding around a lane of slow-moving traffic as the police car flashed its lights. For this, I love the princess it. incurred a 400-pound fine and five <laughs> points on her license. <laughs> no, I, I can't. It. I'm sorry. I can't. I, I'm I love a... it. <laughs> They're not here to pull me over. They're here to escort me. Let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, she just took a new level of cool to me. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, my gosh. Mm. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to laugh through the video, but that was just epically funny and also something you would have done. Mm. <laughs> it wasn't the first time she'd been fined. In 1990, Two speeding offenses cost her 150 pounds, according to the Latin Times, and a one-month ban on driving along with the fine. Before that, she was caught speeding twice during the 1970s. Poor the queen. first time in 1972 brought her a written warning. The second in 1977 cost her 40 pounds. On the two occasions where her fines crossed the 100-pound line and didn't put up any protest, she pleaded guilty and accepted the fines. Mm -hmm. Among Britons, constitutional monarchy remains the preferred form of government, even if support has shrunk in recent years. Yet there have been few critics of the monarchy with the acidity and facility of Christopher Hitchens. Throughout his life, Hitchens railed against the principle of a hereditary head of state he and looks the familiar. suitability of any of the House of Windsor for the job. Back in oh. 1979, he wrote in New Statesman, the British royal family is a rather uninspiring and dowdy crew of people. Hitchens nice man. never minced words, and he rarely eased up on public targets once he'd set his sights on them. Okay. For a supposedly serious and grown-up country, to submit itself to being lectured by a spoiled and pampered lordling is something embarrassing. But he could pay compliments to his foes, though not always with grace, and not always without making a critical point about someone else. Speaking on C-SPAN, he offered some grudging admiration for the charity work Princess Anne was often involved in. Huh. despite delivering the compliment in a fairly backhanded way. Hmm. She's not photogenic, for one thing. She's a boring frump, but she really is a spade work charity worker. Nah, dude. Yeah, backhanded compliment. Again, another thing you'd cool. say only about the female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's just it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what a jerk. People will say all kinds of stuff. Well, I, I've seen that guy's face before. Have you? Yeah, I, I, he seems familiar. But I feel like maybe he's been on our news here, probably yeah, criticizing the royal family. Yeah, probably. But I, I don't. I didn't know who he was. Now I do, and I don't want to ever see his face again because he's such a handsome guy. <laughs> right. That's what my mom would have said. All the royal family members serve as patrons of charities, but Princess Anne has been particularly hands-on in this area of public service. That's phenomenal. the greatest share of her attention has gone to the Save the Children Fund. The first charity she became involved with in 1970, according to the royal family's official website. The charity was founded in 1919, and over 100 wow. years later, it operates in nearly 120 countries, with its site listing programs in education, healthcare, emergency response, Fantastic. and protection against harm. All funds raised are helping save the children to support families who have been hardest hit by the coronavirus crisis. Anne took a large role in Save the Children as soon as she became connected to the organization. In the same year she got involved, she became Save the Children's president, a role she continued to play until 2017. That's a when huge she deal. stepped down from that role, nice. it was to take over from Queen Elizabeth II as the patron of the charity. Okay. Amidst other cold wars. Oh no, before they go on, just I you know, hearing all this and all the uh, all the events mm -hmm. she does every year, up mm -hmm. to five hundred in a year. Yeah. Good lord. Yeah, she's busy. I mean, you just think about that for a minute. I don't know if you guys have ever done any charity work. Debbie and I have our own nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We uh, pre COVID, uh, we put on a nonprofit uh, fundraiser for our, um, every year, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of work. But that, that was is. just one event, and mm -hmm. um, geez, I just can't imagine. I give so much respect for her. Absolutely. Um, I really do. And then everything she's, you know, growing up in the spotlight, all that, you know, just, mm -hmm. but yeah. And then she devotes herself to this being the president of Save the Children. That's an impressive yeah, that's in amazing. its own right. But then all the other charities, was it 300 they said she's attached to, I think? I think they said that over 300. That's inspiring. And having a family of her own. Too. Exactly. <laughs> Don't leave that out. <laughs> wow. Okay. For from Queen Elizabeth II as the patron of the charity. She's incredible. Amidst other Cold War tensions, the hostility between royalty and communism held fewer international risks, but still ran deep. Before World War I, all the royal houses of Europe were related. George V, Queen Elizabeth II's grandfather, and Tsar Nicholas II were first cousins, 
close friends, and so physically similar that they could pass for twins. They're not. Oh, family bonds twins. did not keep George from denying Nicholas and his family asylum when they were overthrown by the Russian Revolution in 1917. More than 70 years later, Princess Anne, Nicholas's third cousin, received an invitation from Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev to visit his country. Huh. According to UPI, Anne had previously visited the Soviet Union in 1973 as part of the British team competing in the European Equestrian Championships, accompanied by her father, Prince Philip. But the two-week 1990 trip was an official state visit, the first made by a royal to the Soviet Union since Nicholas's assassination. Wow. It was oh. hoped that Anne might pave the way for Queen Elizabeth II herself I doubt that to visit. Happened. That Would wasn't to be. Okay. The Soviet Union collapsed the following year. Oh, yeah. But the Queen did visit the newly organized Russian Federation in 1994. Okay. That's it? Wow. No, I want more. <laughs> I know. She is just such an amazing person. Oh, that was just a teaser. I know. It was a teaser. It teaser. wasn't a very long one, but it was something to start us off. Um, Definitely it you. was. Uh, wow. Okay, so I'm sure there's a lot more to her life. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is. Uh, of course there is. I mean, that was 12 minutes long. Right. Um, but as far as what we did learn there, it's a really good, like, you know, springboard to to learn more about her, to dive into different places. Um, that was so cool. I, I, I mean, I didn't know any of it. I'm not really that surprised by some of it in a way because of what you guys have all said. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you loved her so much and thought she was so cool. And I get now why. Exactly. But I know we're missing a lot of things too, but still. Yeah, I'm sure we are. But like I said, I mean, she is clearly her mother's daughter. Yep. I mean, you can definitely see that yep. um, in her work ethic and her drive. And her smile. For serving the country. They have the same beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. They do. And she's right. She's very pretty. Uh, but I like her style. You know, it's, 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 she it just fix it and changes it to whatever uh -huh. she wants to. And I like that she doesn't hold herself to one specific type. Right. Um, I kind of try to do that myself. And without really thinking about it, I guess. Yeah, kind of stay classic. Yeah. Um, but elegant. Yeah, um, exactly. And um, she's put up a lot of crap in her life. And, and I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, I noticed that this was eight months ago it was uploaded. So that had been a month prior to the Queen's passing. Mm -hmm. So this was done right before she passed away, unfortunately. Um, but let us know if you'd like us to take a further, deeper dive uh -huh. into Princess Anne. I'd like to. I definitely would. And if you have a suggestion of what part of her life we should dive into. Ooh, good one. Um, please let us know that too. And if there's anything else about Princess Anne that wasn't mentioned in this video. Well, no, I don't, 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 don't. Okay. Maybe tell us, but only if you don't want us to react to it though. Because if you tell us in the comments. True. Yeah, that's the, that's the only reason I'm saying true, that. True. Then we won't be able to find out about it in a video. And once I find out about something in the comment, I typically don't want to do a video then because I'm like, oh, right. I already know. <laughs> okay. Good point. <laughs> Yeah, just, just thinking it that way. But um, if that was good what you said, though, as far as mm -hmm. a specific time period in her life you'd like us to try to find a video mm -hmm. on, or if you maybe have a suggestion in the video, uh, yes. of a video in the comments, that'd be great, too. But I really did have fun listening to this, um, learning about her just a little bit, and um, hopefully look to, forward to learning more about her in the future. I still want to take a look at uh, Prince Edward, too, for no known reason. <laughs> There's no reason, specifically. No reason just random. All. Just to, you know, learn more. It's not about I don't want to see him or anything. Putting your eyes on a video, is it? <laughs> I, I don't want to just look at him when he was young or anything. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this episode with us today. We hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, leave us a comment and hit the like button, and um, we'll be back soon. So until then, love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.